At this year's G20 summit in Antalya, Turkey, the world's largest economies agreed to limit the rise in global temperatures to 2 degrees Celsius. The question is, how? That's a tall task at the Paris conference to achieve a legally binding agreement. That agreement will include all major elements of uh, the major issues we are now uh, discussing, for example, uh, mitigation, adaptation, uh, financing, capacity building, technology transfer. I mean, all those kind of topics are, are all very, very important for, for, for the whole world to Im really implement uh, the convention. The purpose of the meetings is to assess nations' progress in adapting to climate change that is already underway and to set goals for reducing greenhouse gas emissions that are the primary drivers of climate change. Two degrees, uh, you know, uh, consensus from the leaders and removal of subsidies to fossil fuels, yes, they all agreed to do so, but if you look at the uh, common but differentiated responsibility issues, uh, you know, the responsibilities between developed and developing countries and also actually and the, the financing issue and the climate fund and uh, committed by developed region countries to developing countries, uh, there's no clarity on that. Under the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change, before the Paris Climate Talks, all countries have been invited to submit detailed plans setting out how they will reach the target of emission reduction and what they will do to combat global warming. China submitted its plan back in June. China is committed to cutting its carbon dioxide emissions per unit of GDP by 60 to 65 percent from 2005 levels by 2030. Beijing has also promised to increase non-fossil fuel sources in primary energy consumption. Our target is based on our own needs not based on uh, the requirement from other countries. I think the, the submission is actually reaffirming our commitment to develop a national system by 2017. I think this will also in uh, some way pushing domestic work. China is already the world's largest manufacturer of renewable energy products. And although China uses the most coal in the world, its consumption was flat in 2014 and has been dropping ever since. If this trend continues, experts say China could achieve a peak in total emissions well before its goal of 2030. Fang Tongxuan, CCTV, Beijing.